What's going on guys, Ricky Bowden here. I'm a former Army combat photographer and your virtual mentor here with Shoot Better Sports, where we literally teach you how to shoot better sports. In this video, I'm gonna discuss my approach to shooting a football game. Stay tuned. The first part of the game I use to get my settings together is pre-game. During pre-game, there's a lot of shots that you can get that can be used for other purposes. No, it's not action, but you can get a lot of great portraits. You know, the coach, the guys warming up, whoever the star players are for that team, get a lot of candid shots of them just preparing and getting ready for the game. It's also a time to be used to make sure that your settings are good and that everything's working and functional as far as your cameras, everything is good. Most times when you're shooting a football game, you already know kind of what works for your camera. I talked about that in my other video about making sure that you understand your camera systems because once you understand your camera system, you know exactly where you want things for whatever it is that you're shooting. Once pregame is over, you also have the coin toss. That's something you can get some great shots. You can be really creative. I like to use uh, the wide angle lenses during that time to get a real wide shot. Usually during the opening kickoff, it depends on the team. If they have a really, really electric and exciting returner, I'll focus my attention on the returner because there is a big chance that he may break one and return it for it touchdown so I focus myself on the returner I will get behind the kickoff team with a super telephoto maybe a 300 or a 400 and I only fire off my shutter if he runs towards me if he runs away from my camera there's no point in shooting that because it's gonna be way away and it's just not gonna be a good shot because he's running away so I don't mess with those so once the ball is kicked off the first thing I do is I focus on the offense so what I want to do number one is get good quarterback shots up close handoffs dropping back to pass and then I also want to get running backs a clean running back shot of him running towards my camera again if he runs away from my camera I do not release the shutter I don't spray and pray I want the action coming at me and I want to be able to see faces once I'm satisfied with everything that I got from behind slightly behind the line of scrimmage then I go in front of the action I go at least 20 to 25 yards in front of the offense and I try to shoot the action coming at me so once I get those shots and the ball continues to move I continue to move with the ball once we get in the red zone you are too tight for a 400 millimeter lens you might still be able to use your 300 if they're at the 20 yard line but after that you need to switch to your 70 to 200 or you need to switch to like a 85 or whatever it is that you want so what i do once i get in the red zone i switch to the 70 to 200 i like to go to the corner of the end zone and whatever direction they're running in again if they're not running at me i don't snap the photo because it's not going to be a good photo if the receivers on the side the, their star receiver is on the side that you are away from you need to make sure you're on the side where the star receiver is because nine times out of ten especially if you shooting on a high school level and a college level matter of fact any level if they got a star wide receiver nine times out of ten they're going to go to him so you need to be on that side so you can be sure that the play is going to come at you whether it's a quick slant whether it's a post corner or whether it's a jump ball if you're on that same side you have a great opportunity to get the shot on the defensive side of the ball i get behind the offense and i usually like to get the defensive end and the offensive tackle I like to get them going at it especially if it's a star defensive end i try to make sure that i get great shots of him engaging with the offensive tackle but that's a great time to get that shot it's also a great time to get shots of the receiver where you can see his face because when you're ahead of the action a lot of times you're not going to get it because they're going to either be looking up or they're going to be have they're going to have their back to you if they're catching a comeback or a curl or something like that but if you're behind the line of scrimmage and they're shooting a comeback or a curl you have now you have them in front of when they turn around you see their face and them catching the football so that's that's a great another great position to be in when you want to get the receivers and you want to get their face in the shot so i recommend behind the offense for receiver shots as well as if you're shooting defense defensive tackle if you want to get offensive line and defensive line battles it's great to get it behind the line of scrimmage or behind the defense depending on which point of view you want so when you're shooting you always should be shooting from a low angle football is shot best from a low angle nobody really wants to see you stand up and take a shot of 
love that a normal guy can get. You know, think about the crowd. You want to bring them in. You want to make them feel like they're in the game. And the only way to do that is shoot low and to make the players look larger than life. But if you're just standing up shooting, it's kind of lazy in my opinion. And it's not a point of view that people really prefer. Everybody can see that point of view. But to get low and be in there, everybody doesn't get that point of view. So always shoot at a low angle. So you should be on one knee or two knees or in some cases in the prone if you're trying to get something spectacular you should be in the prone trying to get it the prone is on your belly trying to get a shot everything should be shot from low angle when you when you're shooting football it's just, just unless you're going for something um, particular or something specific it should be shot from low angle that, those are the most interesting shots I, I see and the most interesting shots that I've gotten is when they're shot at a low angle again guys if this is your first time watching watching the channel please go ahead and subscribe hit the like button and also hit the bell notification icon so that you'll be informed when I post new content. Guys, Ricky here for Shoot Better Sports. Thank you guys for the people that have been supporting. I'll see you guys in the next video.